Welcome back to another episode of The Wild Table. Today, we're way up at the bush line and we're hunting wild pig. I'm wrapped for this one. Alright, so the other day I put out a post on social media and I asked if anyone knew of any places close to where I live where I might be able to hunt small game like rabbits and geese, etc. And the manager of a big farm got back to me and he said, hey, you know what? You might be able to come up here and shoot some pigs and some deer. So I drove up and introduced myself. He said, you know, pretty much every single evening there's wild pigs that come out of the bush line to feed on the, um, on the farmland. And of course, wild pigs are one of those resources in New Zealand that need to get managed because in large numbers, they will destroy a paddock. And that really has a negative impact on any kind of farm. So yeah, we've just been granted that the, basically the free roam of this entire place um, and we're just going to be combing the bush edges sort of from now until dark and fingers crossed we find a couple of pigs. It's so cool. Sometimes you can just look at the bush and you can, you can see by the size of the hole what comes through there on a regular basis. That hole right there is definitely the place where pigs come through on a regular basis. Makes a lot of sense too, because this is a low point. Wild pigs are notoriously hard to hunt in New Zealand if you don't have dogs trained for the task. And my dog is a champion at retrieving ducks and waterfowl, but faced with a wild boar, she'd like to turn back to the truck and decline the invitation for a tusky rumble. So in short, I don't often hunt pigs, I just don't know where to go. This is why, to me, it's an incredible privilege to be allowed to hunt this farm. It's not hunting in the sense of a good old bush bash, nor do I have to climb hundreds of meters in elevation, but it is still a wild meat harvest. And sometimes, that's just what the freezer needs. I've just heard some squealing over the hill. And I, yeah, it's piglets, so there's a couple of pigs just over the hill here. I only saw one, so I don't know how big of a herd it is. But hopefully I can shoot one or two out of that herd. Black, so. Fuck, I thought I had had a bad hit. But I think he just turned around and pretty much dropped on the money. Fuck. Alright, there you go. Definitely, um, she's definitely had 
um, sucklings though. But the other pick that I saw running was about the same size, so it wasn't a, wasn't a suckling. I just I couldn't see anything else. I could only see this one, and um, yeah, I dropped a clean. You can see by the foamy blood that this was a, um, a direct heart and lung shot. So in one side through the lungs, and you can see by the foamy blood you now it's it's hit lung tissue. Just like any other big game animal, you know these guts. As soon as the animal is dead, um, they start to bloat. Um, so we need to make sure we get the guts out of this pig as soon as we can. It's not, it's not a huge pig, which is actually really good because it'll be really good eating and the, 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 the carry out won't be um, terrible because we walked quite a ways. Yeah, man, just wrapped. Like she, she would have walked, uh, you know, I th I'm pretty sure this is actually exactly where I shot her. So she, I think she just turned around and dropped and that's, that's what I want when I'm hunting. This is the damage that the pigs can do on the farm. You can see it all this grass is like freshly uprooted. Yeah, that clump of grass was only just upturned like a couple of days ago. Pigs, if they left to their own devices, they'll just come through a farm and just bulldoze the place. <clears throat> but I'd say there might be a fairly good chance if we might pick up another pig along here. Fingers crossed. We do hunt the rest of that evening right up until the point where safely identifying a target is no longer possible. And honestly, I'm absolutely wrapped to call this a day and take home this beautiful young sow that we shot earlier. This was an easy hunt and that I'm grateful for. Alright, there you go. Um, we didn't find another pig. We hunted right until dark, but that's all good. This is a perfect sized Eden pig and I'm just absolutely wrapped. I'm gonna chuck in the truck now and make our way back home. I don't know man, just what a gift to be able to just drive on up, shoot a pig, bring it home, fill the freezer. All right, so thankfully in my garage, I have a full length fridge set up, which is basically just designed to chill uh, whole animals down. So the whole pig carcass at the moment is hanging inside of that fridge. I'm gonna take it out in a second and we're gonna attach it to this block of tackle, which allows me to hoist the whole thing up nice and high. Um, and then the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, gonna light the torch and we're gonna singe all the hair off the board. The reason why we do that, um, we could skin the whole animal, but the reason why we do it this way is because the skin on a pig um, can obviously turn into crackling, which is nice and we want that. So it's a little, a little bit like um, skinning versus plucking a duck. You pluck the duck because you want the skin. Same with this. We singe the hair off because we want the skin for cracking. I've taken the middle portion and I've basically cut it up into some pork chops um, as well as the ribs and also a uh, loin uh, roast section. So. I've got the ribs and the loin section here in the pot and I'm going to add to it a little bit of balsamic vinegar, some rosé wine, some olive oil, some onion, some garlic and some ginger and I'm going to pop that in the oven on fairly low heat, about 160 or so degrees, 170 degrees for a good four hours until this stuff is just about ready to fall off the bone and then I'm going to take it and finish it on a wood fire barbecue and then slap it with some barbecue sauce and that will give it the final design. This is going to be a good meal. Alright, there you go. We've got a, a bunch of different cuts of pork on the go. We've got ribs, we've got some of the loin, um, we've got some steaks and chops, and some of the barbecue, some in the oven. Look forward to the family digging into this. Success. Wild food. And there you have it. What could be better than having your whole family over for a nice dinner with food that my own two hands brought from that field to this table? My goal is to find a way to do this with as many meals as I can muster. And having been granted access to this farm, 
might just be one step closer to fulfilling that goal. Wild food that I harvest and process myself is in my mind the best way to stay connected to the land, the people and the reality of being human. Man, hunter, provider. And there you go.